I'm Susan Moore. I'm a professor of experimental diabetes and metabolism at Cardiff University. And I research into basic science mechanisms of why people get type 1 diabetes. I'm also a clinician. I treat patients with adult diabetes. I'm particularly interested in working with people with insulin pumps and also people with cystic fibrosis who have diabetes, which is a different type of diabetes. Our research involves understanding immunological mechanisms that underlie why people might get type 1 diabetes. We do use animal models and we do this alongside our work in human diabetes because we can get some very important information from the adults, sorry, from the animal models that we use to signpost the direction of our research in humans. And so over many years, my research has led me to study different components of the immune system. We look at T lymphocytes, which are white blood cells, which can directly attack the insulin-producing beta cells. We also look at B cells, which help those T lymphocytes, those killer cells, to do their job. And most recently, we have been interested in the role of gut bacteria as an environmental influence on why people might get type 1 diabetes. I think there isn't the evidence at the moment to suggest that people should be taking probiotics because probiotics are bacteria that are supposed to lead to health. But we don't actually understand how that works at the moment. And there may be particular bacteria that should be in a probiotic that might make a difference to diabetes. And we don't yet understand that. So taking general probiotics that are available at the moment won't necessarily help because we don't know that those are going to be the right bacteria to do the job. So although probiotics are advertised to be important for health, whether they would make a difference to type 1 diabetes, we don't actually know at the moment. We do need to do the studies because it is possible in the future we might understand how some bacteria might lead to health and prevention of diabetes, but we are not there yet. We need to understand what is going on and then try to look to see whether probiotics might be helpful by a really well-controlled trial. And the reason for that is that we might find in one or two people that there appears to be an effect. But when you actually look to see what happens when many people take something, it may not really be so. It might have happened by chance. And so the reason that we need large studies, some people taking a treatment and some people taking a dummy treatment without knowing what the treatments are is really important because we don't want people to be taking things just because it could work by chance. It is really important to know whether something works or it doesn't. And the only way we can find that out is by doing a proper study and doing this in a way where people don't know what they're taking. We know that there's a very powerful effect of just taking something. But we want to know that that effect of just taking something isn't the reason that we see an effect when we are doing a study. We want to know that the treatment we're giving really does something. And then we can, in the future, confidently say, this does something because it makes a specific change. And it's not because it happens by chance. And so, as we think about something like probiotics, it's really important that we do a study where some people will take a probiotic and some people won't, and then see at the end whether that probiotic has made a difference. Because if we don't do that study, we really won't know whether the probiotic works or not.